Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to another episode of our virtual shakeout. My name is Hannah, and I'm going to be teaching your guys' lesson today. Um, so today, we're going to be talking about kings and queens. So let's take a moment to kind of brainstorm what makes a good queen or king and what makes a bad queen or king. Let's think of some good things. Some good things would probably be like good leadership someone who's very smart, someone who's kind, someone who's organized, someone who cares a lot for their people, or someone who is very wise and just has a lot of knowledge on how to run a kingdom. Something that might be bad is maybe someone is very fearful or somebody is someone who lies a lot or someone who doesn't really care a lot about other people, someone who doesn't have compassion. There's a lot of different qualities you can find in different leaders um, that might be considered good or bad. So today we're going to be learning about a woman in the Bible named Esther. She was selected to be the queen of Persia, but the king didn't select her because of certain qualities. He only selected her because she thought she was really pretty. Thankfully, even in that choice, God worked to protect his people. But we're going to learn more about that when we read our Bible story. Let's take some time to think about what you would do if you were president. So president is kind of similar to a king or queen in the fact that you are leading a large group of people. Let's think and brainstorm what you might do if you were president of the U.S. right now. Maybe you would make a certain law like no homework is allowed to be put out by schools. I know that's something I would have liked a lot in school. So again, our story today is about a woman named Esther. Um, she was in a position of power. Remember, she was the queen of Persia. Esther had to decide how she would use her power when her people needed help. We're going to find out today what Esther decided to do. So we've been learning about some people in our Bible stories in the Old Testament. So we started by learning about David and he was anointed to be the king of Israel. Um, we also learned how God helped him defeat Goliath the giant. Alright and the next we learned about Moses um, and he was the one who led the Israelites out of Egypt when God freed them from slavery. So if you guys remember, he parted the Red Sea and led all of the Israelites through the sea. God also gave Moses the Ten Commandments, which is a list of how God wants us to live our lives. After that, we learned about Samuel. So Samuel had a mother, her name was Hannah, and she prayed to God asking him to give her a son. Hannah promised to give Samuel back to God. So Samuel grew up at the tabernacle under Eli's care, and God spoke to Samuel. Today we are learning about Esther. The time in history when Esther's story took place was a little over 600 years after the story of Samuel, so we're quite far after Samuel. This was a difficult time for God's chosen people, who were now known as the Jews. They were the Jewish people. So... God's people were in exile, living far away from their homeland, and God was quiet during this time. People didn't hear from him. God did not speak to the Israelites or the Jews, um, and we're actually going to learn that even though he was quiet, he did not forget about his people. Alright guys, so this comes from the book of the Bible, Esther, um, as that is who our main character is, and it is Esther's is Esther chapter 1 through 4. So I'll encourage you guys to open your Bibles up to that and you can pause the video whatever you need. Um, but that's where our story is coming from and I'm going to read um, from my story to you guys. So this story is called Esther Became Queen. When Cyrus was king of Persia, he sent some of God's people back to Judah to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. God's people were called Jews because they were from Judah. Though some Jews returned to Judah to rebuild the temple, many Jews were still in Persia when Ahasuerus became the new king of Persia. When the king's wife did not listen to him, he decided to not let her be queen anymore. The king of Persia needed a queen, and he chose Esther to be queen. Esther was very beautiful. She was a Jew and had been raised by her cousin Mordecai. Esther did not tell the king that she was a Jew. One day, Mordecai heard that Haman, a very important leader who worked for the king, was planning to kill all the Jews. Mordecai was upset. 
he was a Jew, and he did not want all the people he loved to be killed. Mordecai and all of the Jews cried. Esther did not know what was wrong. She sent a messenger to ask Mordecai why all the Jews were upset. Mordecai told Esther about Haman's evil plan. You have to do something, Mordecai said. You're the queen. Ask the king to stop Haman. Ask him to save the Jewish people. Esther sent a message back to Mordecai. No one can approach the king unless the king calls for that person first, Esther said. The punishment is death unless the king holds his scepter, then you may live. Mordecai encouraged Esther to think about it. You are a Jew, he said. If you do not stop Haman, he will kill you too. Maybe this is why you're the queen. Maybe God put Esther in the palace to save her people. Esther asked Mordecai to gather the Jewish people to fast. They would not eat and not drink for three days. They would pray to God for help. Then Esther would go to the king. She was willing to die to save the Jews. Wow, that was quite a story. God's people were really in a scary situation. Um, a lot of the Old Testament, God's people were called the Israelites. But now, after many of them went home to the land of Judah after the exile, they began to be called the Jews. So some of the Jews did not go back to the land of Judah. They stayed in Babylon, which was taken over by the king of Persia. The king of Persia needed a queen. Who remembers why they needed a new queen? That's right, so the king's wife did not listen to the king and he decided after that that she was no longer fit to be queen. So then he chose Esther to be the new queen of Persia. But the king did not know that Esther was a Jew and didn't know this plan was going to unfold. This shows just how much God cared about his people and knew that he was in control of this whole situation. So our next question I have for you guys is, what was Haman's evil plan? Haman wanted to kill all of the Jews, right? And what did the Jews do when they heard about his plan? They cried. I mean, that's completely understandable. I know that is a horrifying situation to be in. Can you imagine, like, if you just found out that the president was planning to kill, like, everyone who has red hair or everyone who has blue eyes. Like, that would be so scary, so terrifying. So Esther had a cousin, um, and the cousin was the one who told Esther about this information. Do you guys remember what his name was? It starts with an M. That's right, his name was Mordecai. So Mordecai thought that God was going to use Esther to save the people. Mordecai told Esther, who knows, perhaps you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. So Esther now had a really big decision to make. She had to decide if she would help her people. The king had a rule about approaching him. Do you guys remember what it was? If the king did not call you to approach him, you would be killed if you came up to him without him asking you to. Do you guys remember, did Esther decide to help her people? Yeah, she did. So Esther asked Mordecai to pray and fast with her. And fasting means you don't eat. So they fasted and prayed for three days. And we find out through this that God's plan all along was to send the message through Abraham's family. Haman might have tried to stop God with his evil plan, but God was ultimately in control. He was working out a plan to use Esther to rescue his people and make the way for his son Jesus to come into the world. So, again, God's plan all along was to send the Messiah through Abraham's family. Haman might have tried to stop God's plan, but God was in control. He knew all along what his plan was. He knew exactly how he was going to stop it. He was working out a plan to use Esther to rescue his people and to make the way for his son, Jesus, to come into the world. God is in control, guys. He always knows what's best for us. He always knows what's going to happen. And he always knows exactly how to help us. Even when life is scary and we're unsure about what the future holds, we can still trust that our life is in God's hands. People all around us need help because we're all sinners. Sin separates people from God. So how can we help people that don't know about Jesus? God wants us to share his plan of salvation with others so that they can be saved as well. 
So, so remember guys, we want to tell people about the gospel, and the gospel is Jesus' story of conquering the grave and defeating Satan. Remember, he was crucified on the cross to save us from all of our sins, even though he had not committed a single sin since he was born. Isn't that crazy? I can't imagine not committing a single sin. It sounds at first like maybe that would be easy to do a bunch of good things, but we sin without even knowing it sometimes. But Jesus did not sin once in his entire life, and instead he went onto the cross to die for our sins to save us so that we would be forgiven. Okay, right, friends, we're now going to move on to our key passage poster, and our key passage is from Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. So I'm going to have you guys say it with me. So do not be afraid. I am with you. Do not be terrified. I am your God. I will make you strong and help you. I will hold you safe in my hands. I always do what is right. All right, so let's say it one more time. Um, feel free to read it on the screen with me and just say it out loud. So do not be afraid. I am with you. Do not be terrified. I am your God. I will make you strong and help you. I will hold you safe in my hands. I will always do what is right. And that's Isaiah 41 verse 10. So can we think of how this verse relates to our Bible story today? First line is, do not be afraid. And the Jews in our story were definitely afraid. Another line we have is, I will make you strong and help you. And God certainly helped the Jews during this time. He sent Esther to be queen so she would be able to talk to the king and convince him to change his mind about this order. The next line we have is, I will hold you safe in my hands, and God definitely kept his people safe in today's Bible story. With your thinking caps on, I want you to think, is there anything similar you've been noticing about all of the Old Testament people we've been learning about? So, I think, something I've noticed, is that all of these people think they're not good enough or they're not talented enough, or they're not important enough to be used by God. But God proves them wrong, and he used each of these people in a very big and special way to fulfill his plan. So let's say this Bible verse one more time so we can work to memorize this verse that is such a good reminder that God is with us, and he can use us for his purposes. I'm going to put the words back up on the screen, and I'm going to have you guys say it all together with me. All right. So do not be afraid. I am with you. Do not be terrified. I am your God. I will make you strong and help you. I will hold you safe in my hands. I always do what is right. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. Great job guys. You always do such a good job at saying those out loud with me and memorizing them. Alrighty, so let's think about the main thing we learned. We learned that even when times are really scary and we're not sure what's going on, we learned that we can trust in the Lord. He always knows what's best for us and He always has a plan for us. Even though we might not be able to see what that plan may be, we can trust that the Lord is in our best interest. Alright, so as we're wrapping up our lessons today, I'm going to pray for you guys. Um, I'm going to have you guys fold your hands, close your eyes, and bow your heads with me, okay? Lord, thank you so much for providing us with the amazing story of Esther, and thank you for your faithfulness, even when we are not faithful to you, Lord. Um, I pray that you would help us all to trust in you, Lord, and trust that you know what's best for us, and you have a plan that even though we may not be able to see it, that we know that you have our best interest at heart, Lord. Again, we thank you for your kindness and your faithfulness, and I pray that we would all try to be more like you each day. In your name we pray, amen. All right, thank you so much, guys, for tuning in to another virtual shakeout. I will see you guys again next week, and I cannot wait. But I'm just so thankful that you guys watch these each week and are able to learn from them and learn with me, and hopefully you guys are applying these to your everyday lives and um, just remembering some of the things that we talk about in class. All right, thanks, guys. Have a great week.